If I asked you, who do you think has the most potential in Hunter x Hunter, and you'd only seen the anime, you'd probably say Mariam, Gon, Kilwa, the Royal Guard, and I'm sure a few others. But what if I told you those all might be wrong? That there's a character the anime almost entirely left out. A character who has the potential to surpass everyone we've seen. This isn't anyone from the royal family or the descendant of a great and powerful Nen user. It's no other than the previous king of the NGL, now reborn as a chimera ant, Gyro. I'm first gonna go over his involvement in the manga, then explain how all that relates to how strong he is, and then finally give a guess at his Nen affinity. So let's get to it. I guess it's somewhat worth mentioning that the only time Gyro's really talked about within the anime is that he used to be the king of NGL, he was killed by the Chimera Ants and fed to the queen, and then that Welfin wants to go find him. The first time we ever really see Gyro is in the manga in chapter 203. While Knuckle, Gon, and Kiwa are all together in a town, we see Gyro walking down the street in that same town, and we get into some big statements. The whole thing is very important, so sorry, I gotta read it word for word. Out of the countless soldier ants born, one had an independent will, adamantly rejecting the queen's commands. His human name was Gyro, the NGL king. His malevolence and determination were second to none. And before I move on from this, I want to mention the way Gyro is drawn. Right away we're shown not only his importance, but the very visible way he carries his anger and hatred. But then, the only other real information we get about Gyro is from chapter 204, which discusses his backstory. The very start of the chapter gives a very brief summary of his early life. For the first 12 years, Gyro grew up in a construction camp. And as a side note, I do think it would have said it, but I think it's possible that this construction camp was in Meteor City, and I'll give an argument for that later. But anyway, it said all he gained from his time there was learning to lay brick and talk while being forced to work, until one day he finally killed his father and left. But then the chapter dives back into his actual backstory. Gyro's father was a drunk who barely ever spoke to Gyro, and because of this, Gyro didn't learn to speak until he was seven years old. Whenever Gyro came home, he had to sit on his bunk bed and was only allowed to leave to go to the bathroom which he could only do twice a day but only before 9 p.m. His bed would make loud noises every time he moved and because one night Gyro made too much noise his father beat him brutally so from that moment on he learned to sleep and sit without making any movements and he wouldn't risk going to the bathroom so instead he would go in a bottle he kept nearby. Don't ever make trouble for anyone is something Gyro's father religiously taught him. Although Gyro made many mistakes, he tried as hard as he could to please his father. To Gyro, his father was the same as God, and regardless of how he was treated by him, he idolized his father. Gyro had this view of his father for only two reasons. First was that when he was five, he almost died from a fever, but his father stayed with him, changing the cold cloth on his head. But the second reason was purely just because he was never asked to leave. That lack of rejection was something Gyro was secretly proud of. However, one day, a stranger went on a rant to Gyro about how his father only kept him around to bring in money. We learned that Gyro always knew that was the reason, but pushed that possibility deep into his heart. But when this idea became too prominent in his mind, he lashed out in pure rage, attacking the man who was much older and bigger. The older guy had always picked on Gyro, and Gyro would never do anything because he stuck to his father's teaching, not to cause trouble for anyone. So Gyro lashing out in anger upset the man. The guy easily pinned Gyro to the ground by having his foot on his head. Gyro stayed pinned as the man continued ranting about his father. He tells Gyro that the man who took care of him when he was sick was his neighbor, not his father. And in fact, his father was just getting drunk as usual. This was a drastic, intense realization for Gyro. One of the two reasons for him viewing his father as God had been crushed right before his eyes. We see his mental state and emotions breaking apart. The man doesn't stop there though, and he continues to say how the neighbor and his father got into a fight, and his father was asked, what if your son dies? To which his father's reply was simply, who cares? Doesn't matter to me either way. Gyro listened to those words. 
words that crushed his view of the world. But while all this happened, he saw something even worse. Gyro saw his father, who took one look at him and turned away without hesitation, probably going to drink once again. Gyro realizes that his father had definitely seen him, and by seeing him walk away, he knew for sure that the man he saw as a god didn't care about him. He didn't care if he lived or died, even if he was his own son. And you see Gyro's mind break even further. It wasn't just his world that had been shattered. It was his reality. His entire view of what life is crumbled right before his eyes. And the narrator says how everything became clear to him. The universe could care less about his existence. And we see Gyro himself come to the full realization that the man he viewed as God didn't care about him. We also see how the one rule Gyro tried so hard to follow was not for his sake or to make him a better person. It was to keep his father out of trouble. But he then realizes it's even more than that. Gyro realized that nothing he did or was asked for in life was to help himself. That one rule to not cause trouble for people didn't apply to him because he was not a person. He wasn't even human. He was nobody. We don't know how long, but Gyro laid on the ground for some time until he finally got up picked up a nearby hammer, went to his house, found his father drinking as usual, and beat him to death by striking his head with a hammer, crushing his skull. And all these things happened from the day he was born up to when he was 12 years old. Then, nine years later, when Gyro was 21, he established NGL. A 21-year-old making a settlement and ruling it is crazy. But anyway, nine years after that, the NGL became a nation and Gyro was its king. Then, at a certain point, chimera ants come about, they kill him and they eat him, and then we cut to Chimera and Gyro, who I believe at this point in time is back in the town Gon Kiwa and Knuckle are in, but I could be wrong. And the narrator says, and now Gyro was completely disconnected from the human race. Gyro wanted to disseminate evil throughout the world. The drug he developed, D2, was only the beginning, and there was more he wanted to do. And quickly, we don't know what D2 is or what it does. We just know that it's a widely popular drug that came from Gyro and the NGL. But moving on. His vicious tenacity did not allow him to forget his human memories. It was as if he were reborn in a new body while remaining himself. He left the queen's domain because his pride still considered himself a king. Gyro wasn't in a hurry. He knew preparations were necessary for major undertakings. His experience in construction made him rational and productive. Gyro left town and disappeared without encountering Gon. Whether this proved to be fortunate for either party will not be known until they ultimately meet. The statements there are pretty clean and simple. For storytelling purposes, I won't explain much because like I said, what you need to know is right there in front of you. But there is one thing I want to say about the statement about Gyro and Gon meeting. I see it being very possible, but until Togashi gets bored with or decides to finish up the Succession War arc, I don't think we should expect anything to happen with these two characters, but who knows? Maybe these new chapters coming out will be the start of Gon and Gyro's story. But what could potentially come of that story is something completely different that I won't get into today. The rest of his time in the manga isn't actually him doing anything. It's just statements from other characters that add to how we should try to understand Gyro. But pretty much the only noteworthy things is that Welfid remembers Gyro being his king. And Welfin says his younger brother used to remind him of Gyro. But more importantly, Welfin has a deep and strong desire to meet Gyro again. And for a second here, please just bear with me. I keep messing up how to pronounce his name, so forgive me, please. But Welfin's desire to meet Gyro again was admirable enough that Ikalgo ends up telling him that once he leaves, to go find Gyro. Also, by the way, Ikalgo also unlocks memories of Gyro being his king 
King. We also learn that Welfin is going to Meteor City to find Gyro, and this is what leads me to think it's possible Gyro's from there, because maybe he wants to return to the place that really made him who he is. Maybe he wants to rule the place that once made him feel less than human, but that's just an idea. It's very possible Gyro went to Meteor City because it's the perfect place to restart whatever his evil plans are. Being in a place where nothing is really known to the people outside of it, being in a place full of nobodies could very well be the perfect place for him to be. It's also worth mentioning, because Welfin gained some human memories and then gained the need to find Gyro, I think it's fair to say it's possible other than using Chimera Ants could also gain memories and want to find Gyro. And it's also worth mentioning that because Gyro still saw himself as king while a Chimera Ant, other ants could still see him as king. Gyro's disobedience to the true Ant King could have been followed by other ants following their true king. Then one final interesting quote we get from Welfin is something Gyro used to say, and that was, don't die until you die. There's not really anything to read into there besides that Gyro's a force that can only be stopped by his death. But that's all there really is to go over story-wise. It's hard to take away a solid idea of what kind of person Gyro is. However, I can speak on his personality traits, which aren't complicated because they're all directly stated. Gyro with possibly the exception of Miriam, because when statements were made, Miriam hadn't been born yet, is the most evil and determined person in all of Hunter x Hunter. This would put him in those terms over the royal Guard, Gon, Kiwa, Jing, Beyond, Periston, Hisoka, Alumi, all of them. Those statements applied to everyone besides Mariam because they all existed in the world when the statement was made. However, you could argue these statements don't apply to people like Beyond and Saridnek because maybe Togashi didn't think of them existing when he wrote the statement. But the point is, Gyro is at least one of the most evil and determined people in Hunter x Hunter. Gyro grew up being a used every day. He was never cared for besides once when he was sick and he didn't even think himself as a person. However, this seems to have changed where he now views himself as a king, and debatably more than that. After becoming king, it's possible he thought he was more than just that. Especially after becoming a Chimera Ant, I think the possibility of him viewing himself as better than human is possible. And although a drastic statement, I think it's possible that he views himself as either a god or just god himself. However, I like the idea that he views himself superior only in the sense as a king, not in a god or divine type of way. Another very important character trait Gyro has is patience, which not only speaks to his potential in Nen, but his potential to get what he wants done done. We know he's straightforward and efficient with his thinking and actions, and considering he built up a kingdom, I think we can hand him an above average level of intelligence. And all these things that I went over are further cemented by him confidently and patiently preparing to restart a new kingdom to spread evil. One final very important thing about Gyro is I think we can safely assume that he still has the hate and rage inside of him, not only explaining his evil intentions, but it speaks for how he could act in the future. If he's guided by rage, who knows what he can get done, not only with his actions, but in Nen. And it's also important to note that his rage is not blind rage. It very much seems that Jaro is able to concentrate his rage into achieving his goal. Now to get into his power and strength, and I will say it's a lot of guessing. However, let's start off with thinking about how strong Jaro would be at his base form, I guess. So besides how he can act when extremely angry and bloodlusted, there's nothing to note about his strength physically until he's in Chimera Ant form. Because once at this stage, he would have gotten a massive physical strength boost, making him faster and stronger. However, it's hard to say whether he has Nen or not. 
From when we see him in the timeline, it's possible he was around when the Chimera Ants gained Nen. Although very unlikely, I guess you could say maybe he was born with Nen. But unless he gained Nen and decided to leave the ant nest after that, I think it's very possible the gyro we see has not acquired Nen yet. However, if he does have Nen, or once he finally obtains it, which he will, because of his anger, malevolence, and determination, and comparing that to people like Gon, Yubi, P2, Periston, Beyond, and Karapika, we know those things greatly increase your power. And as a post-recording edit, I want to say I could have used better examples for what I just said, but the point still stands. Strong emotions can increase your power with Nen. Then, on top of all those emotions that empower one's Nen, Gyro would have the Chimera Ant Aura boost. And no, it wouldn't be as much of a boost as it would have been if he was a Royal Guard member or Mariam, but it's enough to be very concerning. And a very easy way to kind of visualize how concerning this is, just just imagine if Sarainet got turned into a Chimera Ant and retained all of his emotions, memories, all of that. He just got the Chimera Ant aura boost. This is something scary. But I think a safe assumption of Gyro's power, assuming he has Nen, whether that be the present or future Gyro, is around Gon and Killa's level. If he had Nen, he'd surely be no weaker than the other Chimera Ants, but because of his emotions, I think that would boost his power and make him far more deadly than the standard soldiers. However, the gap between soldiers and the Royal Guard is far too big for me to say he'd be on their level. So putting him at Kid Gon and Killa's level makes the most sense to me. Slightly above standard soldiers, not at the Royal Guard. Also, Gyro being on Gon's level is also semi-supported by the fact that they're destined to meet, because if you want to take that as they'll end up fighting, then the gap between them shouldn't be too drastic. And in terms of storytelling, if the gap is massive, then whoever's the weaker one would likely catch up. Now moving on to something different, I have no good ideas as to what Gyro's Nen ability could look like, and I don't feel like making up random guesses for fun today. However, I will say one thing that I think is likely. I think that whatever his Nen ability is, it will have a restriction, a strict one at that. I say he would likely have a restriction on the ability because it's stated that one's emotions can have an impact on their power, but determination only becomes a factor when implemented in a restriction. So if you can't already see what I'm trying to say, if Gyro is the most determined person in Hunter x Hunter, and determination can amplify his strength through a Nen restriction, I think it's likely he'd have one. But other than that, impossible to say what his Nen ability would look like. And once again, I made a mistake and I should have said this earlier, but a lot of things I went over doesn't consider the idea or fact that he's gonna become stronger. If he didn't have Nen while leaving the ant nest, I think he'd likely find out about it elsewhere, specifically Meteor City. So it doesn't matter when he gets Nen, he's destined to obtain it. So once he does, I don't see any other outcome besides him training in it. With characters like Saridnik improving their Nen with the most minimal Nen training, I don't think someone like Gyro would need much help in order to become vastly stronger. And like I just said, once he gains Nen, I'm sure he will tirelessly train and try to perfect it. So yes, all in all, Gyro is a top tier character in terms of strength. Although not comparing to the strength to say Nedra or Mariam, I think he has more than enough potential to get to that level and maybe even beyond. And although we can't make any good guesses on his Nen ability, we can make a decent to all right guess on his Nen affinity. Because of the limited information, I'm not going to go into too much detail as to why he is or isn't likely to be a certain Nen type. The easiest one to exclude is Transmuter, because he's not a weirdo or a trickster, and he doesn't hide who he is. These are all pretty important details of a Transmuter, all things that don't apply to Gyro. He probably isn't an emitter either, because emitters are impatient and short-tempered, both things Gyro is not, and I think Gyro is more mysterious rather than unpredictable. He also isn't impulsive, the 
only time we really see him do anything out of impulse was attack that one guy, but that was under a very specific condition of slowly being worn down until he cracked. He also probably isn't a conjurer because he doesn't seem overly serious or nervous. He also doesn't seem to be very cautious or on guard. He knows what he wants to do and will do it not worrying about anything else. And yes, he's logical, but that's not enough to say he's a conjurer in my opinion. Now we get into some of the more likely options, but although this one's more likely, I still don't think it's quite perfect. However, he could be a manipulator. He does advance at his own pace, he's logical, and ever since he was 12, it doesn't seem like he's ever listened to what others have to say. However, a big problem with this is manipulators often protect their families and loved ones, and we know he did not protect his dad. However, you could defend this by saying that he no longer loved his dad or cared about him, so killing him doesn't really mess anything up. And because people like Welfin admired him so greatly, it's possible he cared about his people. So depending on how you want to think about it, it's very possible Gyro is a manipulator. It's also worth saying that he was manipulated as a child, so maybe now he's the one manipulating. Another possible option is a specialist. If we assume Welfin is not the only one who views Gyro as this great great leader or person, then we could say he's very charismatic, a distinct trait of a specialist. And from the very little information we get, Gyro doesn't reveal anything important about himself. He also doesn't seem like he does or would have any close friends, adding another trait shared with specialist. So it's possible he's a specialist based off these personality traits. However, the one that sits best with me is an enhancer. And first of all, a big part of me thinking this is if he's destined to meet Gon who's an enhancer, he might very well be one as well. I'm pretty much just trying to say that Gyro also being an enhancer is interesting storytelling. But like I said, getting into Gyro and Gon is a separate conversation. But anyway, it's also the description of an enhancer that really gets me. That description says, enhancers are simple-minded and determined. Most of them never lie, hide nothing, and are very straightforward in their actions and thinking. Their words and actions are often dominated by their feelings. They are generally very selfish and focused on their goals. Now, you should have heard that as a near perfect description of Gyro, but if not, let's get into more detail. Gyro is very straightforward in his actions and thinking, so check that off the box. He wants to spread evil, and to do that, he wants or needs a kingdom. He knows how he's going to do it, and nothing's going to stop him. He also seems very selfish in getting to his goal, due to it seeming like it's the only thing he wants and the only thing he cares about. There's nothing besides someone killing him to stop him from reaching his dreams. And due to his past and the state we see him in, it seems like he's still driven by these emotions of anger and hate among other things. However, one thing wrong with the description is being simple-minded. However, as we all should know, you do not need to have a perfect match with these descriptions for them to be possible. They're more just common tropes rather than requirements. And from the very little we know, Gyro doesn't lie and he doesn't hide anything. So I think Gyro being an enhancer is most likely. However, it's way too early to say for sure. And it's also still very possible that he's a manipulator or a specialist. And it's still possible for him to be one of the others. Finally, I want to say, regardless of what his strength really is, Gyro is destined to become a great evil. To become a problem greater than what humanity is ready for. And he's an evil that's destined to meet Gon. But that's all I got for you. That's just about everything we know about Gyro and everything we could say about his potential and strength. I hope you enjoyed and as usual, leave your thoughts in the comments.